right. So another community call, IPC community call. Uh, we start with the updates from the interchain team. And uh, Susanna, uh, would you like to give updates from the product side? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there'll be some stuff about it in the releases stuff, but there's a blog post for the callbacks middleware. Um, if people want to check it out, find out more about the feature. Um, and the website redesign work is coming along and we hope to have um, all of the content launched and everything in place towards the end of September. Cool. Thank you, Susanna. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, or uh, related to the callbacks, uh, to the blog, blog post for callbacks, as Susanna was mentioning, yeah, last uh, iteration, uh, we released the uh, IPC Go 7.3 and callbacks uh, version 0.1. Uh, yeah, this callbacks uh, version is um, compatible with uh, version 7.3. 7.3 includes the support for the ADR, uh, ADR 8 inter interfaces. Um, yeah, so the releases are out. Um, we're uh, now the Edmos team and the Confio team uh, will also have to implement uh, interfaces uh, on their VMs uh, to be able to use the, the, the callbacks middleware. Uh, and from talking to them, yeah, they said that the work should happen in Q4. So hopefully by the end of the year, um, yeah, the middleware will actually be used um, um, in production. Yeah, so that was a uh, um, yeah big achievement from the team. Uh, we've been working on this uh, for a few for a few months, so it was good good to to get it released. Uh, and now <clears throat> this iteration, we're focusing on on V8 and wasn't clients. Uh, for VV8, <clears throat> yeah, we're working on the on the bump of SDK. Uh, yeah, big shout out to to the team uh, that uh, they got uh, green end to end tests uh, in the feature branch. Uh, there was a nasty bug that took like a full day uh, debugging um, <clears throat> uh, to get Hermes the Hermes relayer working with the with interchain test. Uh, but yeah, finally that was uh, solved and, and, and we got the end to end test working. Uh, we communicated the issue to Hermes and, and, and they're fixing it. It's, it's just uh, the Ubuntu version in the Docker file. So um, the Ubuntu version changed and they changed the UID of the default user. And that was basically breaking our tests. But yeah, that was a good, uh, good that we, we found it. Yeah, and this iteration we are yeah focusing on finishing the the remaining issues in the scope for V8, including the migration to the Gov V1 messages, and a few other small issues. Um, yeah, we want to do um an audit uh, of the V8. Uh, yeah, early next iteration. Uh, we will cut some some tags uh, and we'll share it with teams that are. Um, thinking of upgrading to SDK 50 so that they can also start integration. Uh, and our estimated release date is, yeah, is probably uh, first uh, half of October. It could, it could be maybe end of uh, end of September or depending how, how things are going, but yeah, somewhere probably the first half of October we will have the final release. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's about it for, for V8. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, a lot of focus on, on, on getting the upgrade to SDK 50. Then for Wasm clients, uh, <clears throat> yeah, thanks to the work of Steve. So shout out to him. Um, he opened a PR in a with the uh, updated with updated contracts, uh, well, with updated uh, yeah, contracts for like for Tendermint and Grandpa. Uh, we got we have now um, again um, uh, integration tests parsing. Uh, there's still maybe three tests that we need to get some test data for. Uh, and Steve and Vlad from Composable are going to have a look. But yeah, this is looking much better now. <clears throat> and yeah, this iteration, we're going to focus on finishing <clears throat> the last um, issues that we have uh, remaining um, for the release. Um, yeah, issues that were brought up uh, mainly by Ethan Frey uh, during the, the audit. And then, yeah, early next uh, next iteration, we will do another walkthrough and security audit. Um, 
yeah and then we should be able to uh, by the end of the month have a probably a release uh, release candidate and then yeah somewhere in october i'm i'm yeah looking maybe second half of october have the final release um yeah <clears throat> So that's our main focus right now. Uh, this iteration, probably also, yeah, next iteration with the audits and uh, yeah, solving any issues that we find in the audits. Uh, then for for V nine, uh, we have channel gradability. Uh, last iteration also, um, the team did um, great work work on uh, finishing the issues in the alpha milestone. So yeah, we the the feature has reached the alpha. Alpha stage. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna do an audit also uh, next iteration. Uh, we will cut um, a tag. So that, uh, is that an internal audit or a third party audit or what? Oh, it, this is gonna be a, a, a still an internal audit. Yeah. We were we were actually discussing today about having an external audit for channel readability. Um, and yeah, we will probably also arrange that uh, during Q4. Uh, so so yeah, an external team will also. And is there. there a is there docs about what a internal audit entails, and do you produce a report and you know all this sort of thing? Is this red team or purple team, or how's that work? Um, or is it yes, just to go to you? Yeah, um, we still have to decide a bit. Of the, like we, we want to define like a scope for the audit, um, so that we also inform the the team doing the audit in like what parts uh, we would like them to focus on. Um, that's similar to what we did also with um, Ethan Frey when we asked him to do the audit for Owen Watson. Uh, we tried to limit the scope to the parts that uh, <clears throat> we wanted Ethan to focus and <clears throat> other things that, uh, that were not uh, maybe <clears throat> so important uh, because we, we, <clears throat> uh, we had enough knowledge ourselves and, and that was okay. Uh, so probably we'll do something similar for, for this. Uh, yeah, if, when we have the report, we will publish that in the in the repository. Um, yeah, what else? Uh, yeah, the, the spec <clears throat> the, is also being audited. Uh, so informal systems is uh, also going to help us create a, a quint spec uh, that we can for which we can run uh, simulations, uh, and we will also be able to to test. Uh, uh, that, that the protocol works fine, uh, but yeah, then another team will will audit the code. Yeah, that, does that answer your question a bit? Um... A bit. I'd still want to see. It'd still be good to see, you know, sort of the documented process and the artifacts and all that sort of thing. Uh, if the yeah. if if you know, for it to be called a, a an audit, you know, the the that's that's sort of important arm's length view of the code with a with a sort of relatively disinterested report and all that sort of thing so yeah we can we can work on that uh, and, and yeah and publish it uh, probably also in in a physical report like like what would be the scope of the audit what are the areas um that we want the audit team to focus uh, etc yeah. yeah but i think uh, dean is talking about the inter internal Audit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Not the external one. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no, okay. Sorry. Yeah. So, so that's uh, basically we just go through the whole code, uh, bas basically like line by line, and just looking at the code. Uh, and yeah, uh, we, we basically make notes of everything we find at this stage, uh, from needs about uh, naming functions or something like that, to uh, we discuss um, maybe scenarios that. Uh, Maybe we're not covering yet, or yeah, we, we we basically go by line by line of code and discussing. Um, yeah, if, if okay, the, so if the protocol I mean that is, sounds like a code yeah. inspection, more you know more formally, which is diff quite different. Um, so that's why you know exactly you know exactly what is what it, what is entailed and 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 what whether you you know whether it was looked at from the point of view or you know directed by someone whose primary focus is security um even if it's even if it's you know the internal developers that are doing it you know i'm not saying that what you're talking about isn't a good thing to do i just uh, you know when people look for audits they 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 sort of have a certain level of expectation um and you know 
and a code inspection, you know, and and saying our you know our internal audit is done as a code inspection, uh, you know, with scenarios which we then test, for example, you know, or or plus fuzzing plus whatever, you know, I mean something that 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 is um, real clear on on what expectations one might have of the code coming out of that audit would be useful. Yeah, at this stage, like uh, we just finished like the alpha. Uh, we do call, yeah we do basically code review um we focus mainly on on the on the correctness of the code to see if the code is uh, is doing what the spec um yeah well, it, it is is doing what it should be doing according to the spec uh, security is more uh, a concern that we look at uh, a bit later in the process when we are well, I'm you know it, it, when i see an audit i would expect someone thought about coding thought about you know um uh you know argument validation um you know overruns uh 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 you know what if they attack it with a null pointers um you know so some of these some of these things that are sort of normal coding error edge conditions but have a but have a um uh uh you know, typical security consequence, input validation, right? You know, so someone's someone's thinking input validation. So if you're doing a code inspection, then here's the things we're going to look for. Where are the concurrency races? What are the, what's the concurrency controls? You know, all those kinds of things. Yeah, we so, do do the the line by line review in like a, um, uh, I don't know how to say it, a combative, like how is it possible to break this and what are the expectations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, but... If you do that, but no one's thinking about input validation as one of the mechanisms. So what are the end mechanisms we're using to break it, right? You know, to, you uh -huh. know, so, 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 you know, red teaming is great, but red teaming with a checklist of here's all the things we, we try here, here's, here's the set of things we're going to go in as sort of standard, you know, OWASP vulnerability type things. Um, and so we went through and, and looked at all of these, right? Uh, um, you know all the places mm -hmm. where there's marshalling. Is there is there is there any place where we believe user the user's data? You know that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. We can we can try to come come up with such a like a checklist that we can reduce for future for this audit and for other or internal code reviews. Yeah, for this one for future ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks you. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um. Yeah, so that's uh, channel readability. We finished the of our milestone. Yeah, we do this. We will do this uh, internal audit next iteration. We have already issues in the beta milestone. Um, yeah, and we are gonna resume the work with informal on on the quint spec to to model the spec. Um, is, then, are there any plans in any term for a truly third party audit that doesn't include a team that's already seen the code a ton? Sorry, Jack, can you repeat the question? Is there a plan for a truly third party audit for the code base at any point in the future? Yeah, yeah, we were discussing actually that uh, today uh, um, uh, to have an external audit, uh, an external team auditing uh, channel readability. Um, yeah, yeah, so so we will arrange that most likely yeah, during Q4 um, yeah, and the audit will happen during Q4. Yeah. Okay, so that's separate from the work that Informal is doing. Yes, yeah, it's, it's two separate okay. things. Yeah. Great, thank you, Carlos. All right, then, yeah, for, for V9, uh, other features that we are considering adding uh, in the scope, uh, yeah, and which would be nice to have because this require um, these features require channel reliability. Uh, it's adding support for another channels in interchain accounts, adding support for multiple coins in ICS twenty, and and um, yeah, adding also metadata to the ICS twenty packet data. Just just uh, to check the the multi multi coin support means I can have a single transfer of three different coins. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah, so right now it's only possible to send one coin to the same packet data uh, to transfer multiple coins. Uh, yeah, and there's the metadata. There's a, a discussion in the spec repo already from a while ago. Um, yeah, uh, where uh, some information could be added, like uh, decimals, 
uh, of the DNAM and, and other things. Uh, so if if anybody has uh, feedback or ideas about what information to add to this metadata, uh, yeah, please maybe comment uh, on the discussion or, or reach out to Susanna. She's also gonna be uh, uh, talking to teams about that. And is that plan to have the metadata transferred in each packet or metadata on a per connection basis or what? Yeah, um, Aditya maybe can elaborate a bit more on this, yeah. Um, um, I think we're still in the in the uh, product research phase of figuring out what exactly we would want, uh, whether it's ICS-20 specific or, or broader, um, so. I think once once we have a clear understanding of the product requirements, we'll we'll write up a spec and then present it on this call. Yeah. But yeah, if somebody wants to contribute to the discussion, please please do or yeah, reach out to Susanna. Cool. And then um, yeah, for V nine, yeah, we're targeting to have a final release end of Q four. Uh, but we will update uh, as things go if there are any delays. Okay, cool. So, yeah, and uh, maybe one more thing to mention. Uh, Aditya just came back from holiday, and from the last, from the previous core call where we talked about the PR in ICS twenty three opened by Harry from Pocket Network. Um, yeah, Aditya is gonna reach out to to Harry. Uh, to discuss uh, and see how we can move forward with that. All right, any any questions? Any more questions about um, yeah the work that is going on? All right, uh, if not uh, right now, then we can move with the updates from the earlier teams. Uh, Hermes, I think I saw Luca, so. Uh, yeah, so we currently have a, a test, an integration test for the channel upgrade handshake, uh, which work with the new spec. Uh, we haven't updated it to the like latest version of the of your PR, but uh, it seems to work with the new spec at least. Uh, but this will likely, the, the work on this side will slow down because I'm off the whole month of September. So, uh, but if there are updates needed, you can always ping uh, Sean Chen. Uh, mm -hmm. Other than that, there was uh, a lot of focus on the new architecture, which is progressing quite well. So these are the two updates. Okay, cool. Great. Thank you, Luca. Yeah. Uh, from the relayer team, any updates? Um, I don't think anything too substantial has been changed. We have a few in-flight PRs that will um, add support for SDK 50. And then also mm -hmm. um, version 2.4 of the relayer introduced support for VGRAT. And we found out that users were interested in not only being able to use VGRAT to manage their wallets, but um, to be able to support wallets that they maybe don't control the keys for. So we have a fix in the pipeline that will allow people to use um, you know, an address that's not associated with a, a key in their key ring locally. Mm -hmm. okay, cool. uh, about the SDK 50 upgrade, uh, those PRs uh, are related to the issues that Colin opens like last week uh, when we were testing. Yeah, I think, I think there's one or two from Colin that it looked like Jacob um, also had a few in-flight PRs that we'll get to. Uh, the PR by Jacob also to update interchain test uh, to SDK 50. Yep, exactly. Is... Yeah, cool, cool. Then, then yeah, when, when that one gets merged, because right now we're using uh, Jacob's uh, uh, fork uh, of interchain test, but yeah, if that one gets merged, then we can also move back. Okay, yeah, I think that that was going through final review. I think I saw that mentioned even then the last week, so. Cool, great, thank you. Great, then we have other topics. Um, yeah, Michael is writing about async support. 
yeah, we have the issue. Yeah, uh, Michael, yeah, if you want to. Uh, yeah, so um, the Quark chain is pretty per pervasively asynchronous when it deals with its uh, evaluation of contracts. Um, so we've run across in different times, IBC go making assumptions that a callback of some kind is always going to return a synchronous result. Um, the latest problem that has not been solved, um, I did report this quite a while ago, but version version negotiation for a channel version is uh, currently is currently synchronous only. Um, I was wondering if this is just a limitation of IBC Go that we can fix easily, or is this in the spec? And uh, also, are there any are there other synchronous only assumptions in the in the IBC code when it comes to user user space code? Um, I think packet forwarding middleware is synchronous only, but I could be wrong about that. I just wanted to ask. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, about version negotiation, uh, yeah, maybe Aditya, but now he's back. Um, can also look into that. Um, Aditya, any, any first thoughts, maybe? Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember this issue when it first came up. Um, I think it just fell by the the wayside priority wise um but we could take a look at it uh again um i don't believe there's any technical blocker um from the abc go side um yes i don't i don't believe there's a technical blocker from the from the spec standpoint i do think we would um probably i mean the spec doesn't quite uh have any um yeah, the spec, I think, at the moment, assumes synchronicity, but we could change that um, and then make the following changes on the on the application side. Um, yeah. yeah, that would be really good. And and mainly because um, if there are any protocols that require version negotiation, like the ICA host, mm -hmm. uh, we can't, up, currently, we can't really implement the main smart contracts because to enter the smart contract realm, we have to cross an async barrier. Okay. Uh, yeah, and, and the solution that uh, Chris goes way back in the day came up with for the asynchronous acknowledgements uh, was really good for us. That, that allowed us mm -hmm. to make a lot of progress. Mm -hmm. So I'm mm -hmm. thinking that there's probably similar similar approaches that can be done. I, I know we've already rearranged, uh, I think all of the message servers are rearranged so that there's a read, the callback and the write at the very end. Um, mm -hmm. So I think at least that part of it has already been like abstracted away correctly. Then we would just write, we would still have to only write the channel uh, state once we get the version back from the callback. Um, yeah. So I think, I think it should be possible. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. So I'll I'll just leave it in whoever's hands it is to schedule that work. Cool. Um, Susanna might also reach out to you to talk about the async version negotiation. Just just to talk about product requirements and priority, so that we can also fit it in in, in our schedule. Yeah. yeah that's great. I I just left my email there, Susanna. So. Thanks. Are you on Slack as well? There's... I am. Uh, yeah, and the shared channel you have with Cork okay, is fine cool. too. And I can just send a DM. Sounds good. Cool. Um, all right. Um, then anything else to discuss today? Well, uh, the second follow-up part that I wanted to ask, um, I guess it's Strangelove who did packet forward middleware. Uh, oh, awesome. are, are any of the are any of the middlewares um, can they be async, or is it just assumed that it's all going to be synchronous? What do you mean async versus synchronous? Because it's kind of an inherently async system. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, basically that. A return result isn't used immediately, but there's some kind of callback that we can use to to publish the result. Yeah, I think that if you have additional processing, say on a second hop, 
the acknowledgement would wait for the second hop to resolve before it comes back. Okay. So the middle yeah, the Python or middleware thing. already uses the async hack feature. Yeah. I don't mean just async hacks, but I mean, uh, are there, is packet forward middleware basically like user line, con user line concept on top of the core IBC callbacks? Or does it do any like of its own structure when it comes to how how a real, how a middleware interacts with something else on the stack? I don't think I fully got the first part of that. Um. So when when you when you put another piece of middleware on the stack of the packet processing. Right. Does one middleware get called in a synchronous context, or can it be can it go off and do some work for a while, non-blocking work, and then come back and say, okay, next middleware now? I think that would be dependent on how you wire up the stack um, in the app.go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, uh, I can look into it further. I was just wondering if there are any simple answers there already. But... Like, uh, if I'm understanding you correctly, at least like one example would be um, if the packet forward middleware is the only middleware, when the packet is originally sent into a chain, it will call into the um, like into the transfer module to handle all of the like internal bookkeeping and and get you know the voucher minted or or burned. Um, before the packet middleware can do something with those funds on the intermediate chain. Does that kind of answer what you're asking? Um, it, it's implying something. So basically, uh, it, it's the blocking nature. So it, in the asynchronous system, it's like um, the work may perform may be performed in a later block. But in the synchronous version, we're assuming that everything is done within the tr transaction scope. Um, so does it's not just packet forwarding middleware, but it's all kinds of middleware. Uh, are there assumptions in the middleware that you'll get back the result before the transaction is is done evaluating? No, you'll you'll you won't get a result back until the it either gets to the destination or there's some failure along the way, and then you'll get back here. Okay. It will it will hold the acknowledgement until like the life cycle is completed. So it's basically. Um, a stack on top of what VC Go already provides. So I understand. I don't know how much sense I'm making here. <laughs> um, I'm making my goal to go through the implementation and just see if there are any concerns, and then I can get back to you next next meeting. Yeah, or maybe we can also, if you want to ask questions or something in the Slack channel, in the shared Slack channel we have. Um, we can also, yeah, do, do discuss async. Yeah, there. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. Um, any other topics to discuss today? All right, if there's nothing else, uh, we can wrap up, wrap up. All right, thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining. See you in two weeks. Thank you. Bye. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.